Ja, das ist Mike's Daily Podcast. F -F Episode 1456. 1456. And I'm Mike Matthews, broadcasting from Cafe Anyway, located somewhere in Podcastro Valley, Mont. Today, Madame Rudevega, Valentino, Bison Bentley. We'll get to an interesting news segment. I don't know what we'll call it. Maybe we'll call it this. Mike's. Daily podcast. That's what we call the show. What we call the news segment. We'll call it. No, that's legit. Mike's Daily Podcast. That sounds like a good idea. I thought the end of Sherlock was very strange. The TV show with Benedict Cumberbatch, who has the mange, and in it, there's a scene where they are both together, him and Watson, and so they're friends forever. And that's how it ends. Hey, do you ever say Mike's Daily Podcast will do in your texts to people? That seems to be a common response. Mike's will do or Daily Sounds Good or Podcast. LOL, yeah. Yeah. People use that. So the dog owners, when they have, when they meet each other, they get to know each other's dogs. And then finally, they'll say something like, I'm Mike, by the way. It, there's always a by the way in that sentence. I'm Rhonda, by the way. Help me, Rhonda. I felt all Beach Boysy there for a second. Look who just walked in. Hello, Michael Marshall. It's Madame Ruta. Big old the Beach Boys. They were a band. They were. A lot of them are gone now. And Barry Turnbull, who I was friends with in radio for many years, he's gone and he was related to the Beach Boys and we used to talk about them a lot. He was a great guy. I was talking to someone who else walked in who worked also worked with Barry Turnbull and he said that what he remembered about Barry was he would record these funny little things that this guy I know would use on the radio saying stuff like... Dak, uh, hi, I know, let's say the guy's name, Frank. I'm Barry Turnbull, and I know that Frank is f weird. That's what he would do. He was sort of the guy that would be your instant, whatever you wanted him to say. He would say that for you on the radio. It was wonderful. Look who else walked in. Hello, dear Mike. This is Valentino, the parking attendant. And it's a vice of Bentley. Do you know that? Mike, it sounds like that. And here's today's podcast picture. Radio is fun, day. Yes, it is. And listening to radio shows can be fun for someone that's in radio, especially when he's listening to To The Point with Warren Olney. And one of his guests, he is a guy that does a news show and talks to several experts on the show and kind of bounces between all the different experts. And one of the experts kept calling him Tom, even though his name is Warren. And at one point, Warren goes, my name's Warren. And the guy still called him Tom. It was funny. And he said, that's not my name. That's not my name. And it didn't matter. The podcast picture today is a Basil the Boxer when we was at the beach in Carmel. Right after the Daytona Beach trip that I took to Florida. Did not take Basil with me there. It's very difficult to bring a large dog like Basil, who is a large boxer, and fly him all the way in a five-hour, actually an eight-hour flight by the time you lay over in Atlanta and then fly from Atlanta to Daytona to, 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 to Beach. It takes a long time for that dog going, bouncing between planes and everything, and it's just too much. So I said, he's staying home. But when we got back, first thing I did was I took him on a trip down to Monterey, Pacific Grove. Which, by the way, I used to love Pacific Grove. Now I'm kind of, eh. My favorite little burger place closed up. I'm so sad. But, yeah, what we've got is Carmel. That's the podcast picture. Basil finally getting to go on the beach in Carmel. He's never been there before, and he finally got to go. It was a fun time. See that at mikesdailypodcast.com As well as all the past podcast pictures The Secret Sunday show that I did yesterday That you probably didn't know about Where I discussed things like A friend of mine 
who I just knew that some people in this world you know should never get a dog. And this guy got a dog back in uh, uh, January of this year. And I even said on this show, this guy should not get a dog. Just, he's just, he's, he's a, what do you call it? Instant gratification nerd. Like everything he wants now. He goes, Mike, I want to get a dog. And I'm like, no, no, you shouldn't get a dog. And then he went and got a dog. He and his wife had had a dog and, and wonderful dog. I've met the dog. But sure enough, I find out on Friday that he's going to be leaving the Bay Area and moving to Los Angeles. That's his plan anyway. And he wants the dog. He, he wants me to take the dog. <sighs> I'm like, no. People. And you shouldn't enable people. I've done that. Sometimes you do it unwittingly, and it's just, oh, no. So, that, it's all in the last podcast. That was yesterday. The last podcast from the last place on Earth Cafe, anyway. Well, I think I should throw in a sound effect, don't you? Really? Okay, that's good. Yeah, no kidding. Thank you. I could go for a taco. You know, I missed... Yo quiero taco, man. I missed getting a taco on taco... What was it? National Taco Day on on Wednesday. Because that's when I got injured with my foot. I feel so bad. I didn't get to get the dang tacos. <sighs> tacos are misleading anyway. You think you're eating healthy because you got the lettuce and the tomato on there. But you've got a like a deep fried tortilla. Unless you get the soft tacos. But even then... There's a lot of fat involved. I don't know. I don't mean to bring your life down saying these things. Tacos are still great. I'm going to eat them when I get the chance. So Mike'sDailyPodcast.com is where you can go and listen to past shows and see past podcast pictures and see the... Uh, oh, there's the Amazon link. Click on that and buy whatever it is you're going to buy. And that helps us out. And then there's also the thing about... The, what is the thing? The other thing? Oh, the PayPal. And if you do that, you'll get a special greeting from all the Cafe Anyway characters. Let's get to the segment called Now That's Legit. Now That's Legit. Awesome. That intro is short and sweet because we don't have much time. Over 20 nations have curbed diplomatic or business operations of the North Korean government following a more than year-long effort by the State Department, an indication of the kind of behind-the-scenes pressure the U.S. is using to tackle an emerging nuclear standoff, according to the Wall Street Journal. U.S. officials have asked countries to shut down businesses owned by the North Korean government, remove North Korea vessels from their ship registries and flights by the country's national air carrier, and expel its ambassadors. At the Association of Southeast Asian Nations Summit, Earlier this year, U.S. diplomats made sure North Korea couldn't secure any bilateral meetings. Mexico, Peru, Spain, and Kuwait all expelled their North Korean ambassadors after the U.S. warned that Pyongyang was using its embassies to ship contraband and possibly weapons components in diplomatic pouches and earn currency for the regime. Italy became the latest country to do so as recently as October 1st. Kuwait and Qatar, uh, or cater to some who say that way, among other countries, have agreed to reduce the presence of North Korean guest workers. The campaign abroad is intensifying as the Trump administration adopts stricter sanctions at home, and the UN pursues enforcement of its tightest ac- sanctions against Pyongyang. Yet, the talks are also a contrast to the heated exchanges between North Korea leader Kim Jong Un and Trump, who has issued a series of vague threats. The latest threat came in a Twitter message Saturday. Sorry, but only one thing will work, he wrote. On Thursday, he said a White House meeting with military leaders represented the calm before the storm. And the White House refused to clarify on either remarks. But I know there's also something in the news on Friday about how some Russian diplomat who was in North Korea said, oh, they've got the capability now to strike the west coast with their missiles so ah. this is good news though with the pressure on North Korea that that 
I guess we'd call a diplomatic uh, solution. Senator Ron Johnson of Wisconsin said diplomacy was the only option for curtailing North Korea's nuclear program. He said the U.S. should encourage China to step up pressure on Pyongyang. Well, let, we go from China to Russia. And a Russian investor named Pavel Cherkashin, Cherkashin, based in San Francisco, thought that he had the perfect name for a Catholic church, that he is spending $11.5 million converting into a tech palace. It would be called the Hack Temple. But that was before the nearly daily deluge of news about Russian efforts to influence the 2016 presidential election by hacking computers. We had so many concerns from our investors saying this would be an inappropriate name and we should change it, he said. A bunch of Russian guys opening a hacker temple in the middle of San Francisco at a time when Russian hackers are considered the most evil in the world. They say you can't, he said. He's 44, by the way. With news of the hacking and influence, uh, influencing campaigns... The Russian immigrant community of Silicon Valley Which numbers in the tens of thousands By the way Is in a strange new position Some Russian venture capitalists Said startups were more wary About taking their funding While several Russian born engineers Said they were being treated Differently socially And in their companies Lawyers also said some tech firms Were installing tighter security measures Restricting what data foreign Born coders can see At the same time Many said that as Russia gained a reputation For its hackers Interest in hiring its tech talent Was actually increasing So there you go A little peek inside Silicon Valley And other things Silicon, Silicon Valley And San Francisco Something that's from this area Would be of course Apple And their hotly anticipated iPhone 10. It's launching soon well, but thanks to a highly credible new leak, the reality is everyone wants the most radical and expensive iPhone ever made. For a nasty surprise, McRumors brings the depressing news after obtained a new report from Ming-Chi Kuo, widely regarded as the best Apple analyst on the planet. Kuo states iPhone X stock will be extremely limited until well into 2018, that will cause Apple to miss its widely predicted 2017 super cycle. Apple has run into significant problems mass producing the true depth camera sensor the iPhone 10 uses for its Face ID facial recognition. The Face ID controversially replaces Apple's most much loved Touch ID fingerprint sensor and also resulted in the polarizing notch at the top of the iPhone X's display. So this is unlikely to endear it further with iPhone fans. The darn facial recognition, the darn tootin' is really starting to cause problems with Apple. You darn tootin'. And finally, despite critical plays and optimistic praise rather, and optimistic tracking, Warner Brothers Blade Runner 2049 has crashed hard at the box office, even though my roommate says it's pretty good. I think he watched it illegally. I don't know. I don't know what these millennials are doing these days. What are they? What are they up to? I don't know. It grossed just 31.5 million, but it has a budget of five times that. Yikes. It's tough fall for the sequel to the classic noir sci-fi movie, which has several different endings depending on which one you watch. Uh, 2049 The Blade Runner movie uh, After making Let's see Blah uh, They just basically break down the money It made so it didn't do well Oh well as we go outside a cafe anyway we're bringing Mike's Daily Podcast Somewhere in Podcast Valley I may watch it eventually I'm still hooked on watching Stupid Enterprise The Star Trek The last big Star Trek series Before they've done this new reboot I was I get all into the Scott Bakula Jolene Blalock thing And Jolene is now onto some other Is she on Game of Thrones or something now? And I don't know what Scott Bakula is doing But he was on Quantum Leap back in the day It's just so funny Because on the show no one ever dies Actually someone died last on the last episode But he was a bad guy 
He said, I want to fly this spaceship. And he gets in the spaceship and it crashed. The end. So it was a really good episode. And Portlandia. I've been watching that. And uh, the one about how there's a CD stuck in your CD player in your car that you should listen to instead of having to deal with all the freaking things. I swear, Google Play is so hard to manage sometimes. And I point the finger at you too, Apple, with your podcast app. That's just as bad sometimes. Jeez, they gotta make they gotta make it easier. What are your suggestions? Three three six mm daily. You can call me there. Three three six mm daily. Call me here at Cafe anyway. Well, it's been a great show. It might have been a little what scattered. Who cares, right? It's Monday. You need a little scatteredness. I sure hope my foot feels better. It it's feeling a little better than the last time, but still. Hey, I'm gonna get out of here. Uh, come back for the next show, won't you? I will as well. Okay, good. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.